Hello friends, welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. In this tutorial, we'll talk about inflammation. So this is the part one of inflammation topic. This is one of the most important chapters in general pathology. It is very crucial or essential in, in your learning medicine. Uh, the learning objectives for today's uh, tutorial will be, we will define what inflammation is. We'll talk about the types of inflammation. We will look into some historical aspects of inflammation and we will see what are the steps of a typical inflammatory response. And then we'll move on to understand uh, the causes or stimuli for inflammation. And finally, we will end with understanding the vascular changes in acute inflammation. Inflammation, to define, this is a local response of a living vascularized tissue to any injurious agent. Basically, this is a protective response which is needed for the survival. You can equate inflammation to a battle where the enemies are the injurious agents and then the defense mechanisms include the cells like leukocytes, antibodies, complement, etc. But then what we need to understand uh, here is that this tissue where the inflammatory response is going on is like a battlefield and we have to know that this inflammatory response itself can cause tissue damage. Now coming to the types of inflammation, there are two broad categories of inflammation. One is acute inflammation to chronic inflammation. Acute inflammation is very rapid in onset. It can start within minutes or hours whereas chronic inflammation is very slow in the onset. It might take some days for the chronic inflammation to set in. The cells involved in acute inflammation are polymorphonuclear leukocytes, that means neutrophils, whereas the cells involved in chronic inflammation are the lymphocytes, the monocytes and macrophages. The tissue injury in case of acute inflammation is mild and it is often self-limited, whereas the tissue injury in cases of chronic inflammation is very severe and progressive in nature. The local and systemic signs in cases of acute inflammatory response is very prominent whereas it is less prominent in cases of chronic inflammation. So these are the basic differences between acute and chronic inflammation. Now let us see what are the historical aspects of uh, inflammation. See the word inflammation is derived from the Latin inflammare which means to set on fire. Celsus, a Roman writer in the first century AD, he was the one who actually listed the four signs of inflammation. He described a typical inflammatory response as rubor et tumor cum calor et dolor, which means redness and swelling with heat and pain. He said inflammatory response is redness and swelling with heat and pain. So that is how the four signs of inflammation came into being, which means they are rubor, tumor, calor and dolor, which translates into redness, tumor for swelling, calor for heat and dolor for pain. Apart from these four signs of inflammation, there is a fifth sign of inflammation called functiolisa, which means loss of function. This was added by Rudolf Varcho in the 19th century. John Hunter, a Scottish surgeon, in the year 1793, he said inflammation is not a disease, but it is just a response. That is what we all know now. Eli Metchenkov in 1880s, uh, Eli Machinkov is a Russian zoologist. He was the one who discovered the process of phagocytosis. The phagocytosis is a process where the leukocytes engulf the injurious agent and then kills and degrades that particular injurious agent. Now let us see what are these five R's of inflammatory response, which basically means the steps of inflammatory response. The first R is recognition. This is very, very important. The injurious agent has to be recognized by the tissue for the inflammatory response to set in. So the first step is recognition of the injurious agent. The second R is recruitment. Once the injurious agent is recognized, then there will be recruitment of inflammatory cells. In the cases of acute inflammation, it is neutrophil, whereas in the cases of chronic inflammation, it is lymphocyte or monocyte bar macrophages. After the recruitment of inflammatory cells, then there will be a process of removal of this injurious agent. Okay, So, we will be discussing in detail about how the cells are recruited and how these cells help in removal of the injurious agent. The fourth R is regulation. So, the control of inflammatory response is another important step in the whole process. The last one is resolution or repair. So, the steps of inflammatory responses are the recognition, recruitment, removal of the injurious agent, 
regulation or control of the inflammatory response and then finally the inflammation resolves or there will be a repair. Now let us talk in detail about acute inflammation. See this acute inflammation is best understood by understanding these two important events in acute inflammation. One, the vascular changes and two, the cellular events. The vascular changes means that there will be increase in the blood flow. That increase in blood flow is to bring cells and proteins to the site of injury. Okay, This is brought about by vasodilatation and increased vascular permeability. The second and the most important event is a cellular event where there will be recruitment of leukocytes and after the recruitment of leukocytes, there will be activation of leukocytes which leads to the process of destruction of invaders and production of many chemical mediators. The most common mechanism where the invaders or the injurious agent is killed is by the process called phagocytosis. Before we actually go into details about uh, these two events, let us see what are all the stimuli for acute inflammation. In general, any inflammatory response for that matter, the most important stimuli or trigger for inflammation is infection. So this infection can be bacterial infection, viral infection, fungal or parasitic infections. The second important stimuli or trigger for inflammation is tissue necrosis. Tissue necrosis elicits inflammation regardless of the cause for necrosis. What really happens here is that the molecules which are released from the necrotic cells, they are the ones which actually trigger the inflammation. The third important stimuli for inflammation is the trauma. It could be physical or chemical injuries. It could be irradi it could be exposure to some environmental chemicals. Any of these can you know trigger inflammatory response. See foreign bodies by themselves, like for example, uh, the suture material, the splinters, the dust particles, they by themselves can elicit inflammatory response and also they can you know, trigger inflammation by injuring that particular uh, tissue. And lastly, immune reactions can also trigger inflammatory response. So we all know that immune reactions are normally a protective uh, mechanism, but then immune reactions can also trigger inflammation particularly in conditions like autoimmune disorders or hypersensitivity reactions. Having known that there are various stimuli or triggers for acute inflammation, now it is very important to know that how these stimuli are recognized by the host. Now let us see how these are recognized by the host. See these stimuli are recognized by the receptors. Okay, These receptors are present on the antigen presenting cells or the epithelial cells. It is these receptors which sense these stimuli are trigger agents. What are these receptors? The first and the foremost is toll like receptors. And the second one is inflammasome. Now, what are these toll like receptors? These are microbial sensors where which are present in plasma membranes and endosomes. What they do is they recognize products of bacteria, they recognize products of virus and other pathogens. Almost all pathogens are recognized by these toll like receptors. It not only recognizes these you know, microbial uh, organisms, it also results in production of mediators of inflammation. That is very important. The second important receptor is inflammasome. These are multi-protein cytoplasmic complex where they recognize the products of dead cells. Once inflammasome is you know, exposed to these products of dead cells, they activate caspase 1, which in turn activates interleukin 1. And we know that interleukin 1 is one of the most important mediator for leukocyte recruitment. And these leukocytes which are recruited by means of interleukin 1, they are the ones which phagocytose and destroy the dead cells. So note that these two receptors are most important for any tissue you know, to recognize the invaders or the stimuli or the triggers. They are the toll-like receptors and inflammasomes. Now let us see what really happens in acute inflammation. We know that there are two important events. One is the vascular changes and two the cellular events. Vascular changes, we, are, we know that there will be increase in the blood flow and this vascular change is basically to bring cells and proteins to the site of injury. So vascular changes again can be divided into two different components. One, changes in the vascular flow and caliber and two, increased vascular permeability. Okay. In this tutorial, we will concentrate only on the vascular changes and I will discuss more about cellular changes in the next tutorial. Now we will talk about changes in the vascular flow and caliber. As soon as the tissue is exposed to injurious agent or the stimuli, the first thing happens is vasodilatation. So this is brought about by histamine. So vasodilatation 
to begin with starts in arterioles which results in you know increased blood flow and this increased blood flow is what makes the tissue red the heat or redness of the inflamed tissue is because of increased blood flow due to vasodilatation so this vasodilatation is immediately or quickly followed by increased vascular permeability which results in escape of fluid into the extravascular space we will talk more about the mechanisms of increased vascular permeability later but now let us understand that because of vasodilatation and because of increased vascular permeability what really happens is there is increased blood flow there is dilatation of blood vessels and the fluid is lost into the extravascular space so combined effect of these two results in slowing of the blood flow and then concentration of rbc's which results in increased viscosity so all these three results in you know engorgement of small vessels which we call as stasis so this stasis is seen as you know vascular congestion or you know localized redness of the affected tissue so this is all about the changes in the vascular flow and caliber so the next important uh, you know part of vascular changes is increased vascular permeability remember increased vascular permeability is the hallmark of acute inflammation what really happens is there is escape of fluid the blood cells and proteins from the blood vessels into the interstitial tissue now having known that there is escape of fluid into the interstitial tissue let us understand the mechanisms involved in increased vascular per the first mechanism is contraction of endothelial cells assume that this is a capillary a lumen which is lined by endothelial cells this endothelial cells is normal looking whereas this is the one which is contracted as soon as there is contraction of endothelial cells what really happens is there is increased gap between the endothelial cells okay so there is widening of the gap between the endothelial cells and this widening and it is through these widened pores you know the fluid escapes so this contraction of endothelial cells is the most common mechanism of increased vascular permeability it occurs immediately and it is very short lived histamine bradykinin and leukotrienes are the chemicals which are important in uh, which are the important mediators for uh, this particular mechanism that is contraction of endothelial cells because it is immediate and short lived this is also referred to as immediate transient response the second mechanism is direct damage to endothelium or endothelial injury in some of the trigger events like burns when exposure to microbes or toxins what these uh, do is they directly damage the endothelial cells as you can see here the endothelial cells are damaged they are broken and you know this occurs immediately as soon as the damage is done and it is sustained for several hours until the damage is repaired and it is through these damaged endothelial cells the fluid escapes out of the vascular lumen the third important mechanism is endothelial injury due to leukocytes the neutrophils which are adhering to the endothelium they themselves can injure the endothelium and then they cause you know damage to these endothelial cells this also occurs immediately and then it is sustained for several hours until the damage is repaired so again just like direct injury the fluid escapes through these damaged endothelial cells and the last one but not that very important uh, mechanism is transcytosis see this transcytosis involve intracellular channels increased transport of fluids and proteins through these intracellular channels and these are the channels which are stimulated by vascular endothelial growth factor and this vascular endothelial growth factor is the one which promotes leakage of the fluid through the endothelial cells so basically this is the escape of fluid into the extravascular space without widening of the gap without the endothelial cells being injured but it is through the endothelial cells itself by the intracellular channels and this process is referred to as transcytosis so these were the four important mechanisms of increased vascular permeability okay what are these one contraction of endothelial cells two direct damage to the endothelium or endothelial injury and third the endothelial injury because of leukocytes and lastly transcytosis so this completes the vascular changes in acute inflammation so in summary we defined what inflammation is we uh, discussed the types of inflammation we talked about the historical aspects of inflammation and then we you know uh, looked into the steps of inflammatory response that is the 5 hours of 
inflammatory response and then we looked into various causes or stimuli for inflammation and finally we talked about uh, the vascular changes in acute inflammation in the next tutorial i will discuss in uh, detail about the cellular events which occurs in acute inflammation thank you for watching if you like this video please hit the like button do comment don't forget to subscribe this channel for more videos to come you will be updated with more videos if you subscribe this channel please do share thank you